This side of the glass has the patina on the lead. This side, the patina hasn't been applied yet. You can see the differences in where the solder joints are and the lead. I want to just highlight this process. You take steel wool and all you do is break the tarnish off. You don't want to sand the lead and make lead dust because that's toxic and it's not good for the environment. After you polish everything up with the steel wool and get it through the tarnish and down to the bare lead, you put the patina on it. And then you wipe off the excess and polish the glass with a polishing compound. This is the patina product that's going to turn the lead black. You don't want to touch this and then recontaminate your whole jar of patina. So I pull a separate amount off, keep it in the sauce dish, and then we'll see how it affects the color. It doesn't really turn it black. It's more like a really dark brown or even maybe, I see purple. <laughs> but the light that you're in maybe affects that a little bit. I'll go ahead and coat the entire project, and then I come back with a paper towel and wipe everything that's extra off. I'm not very stingy with the material, so I don't think it's a good idea to leave it on the glass, though, because if you do, I think it would end up staining the glass. Here's the window frame, and it's been primed using an all-purpose interior-exterior primer that's made, that's oil base. And that's oil base causes all the trouble because the finished coat of paint that goes on this is latex. So it says on the directions that you have to wait 10 days before you can paint this with latex paint. And then the glazing is for the stained glass once it gets installed. That's what I'm gonna do now. And then I'll seal it into the wooden window frame with the glazing. I'll let that dry, dry for probably uh, two or three days, just so that it stiffens up a little bit. Then you can brush it with the oil-based primer. And that's when the clock will start on the 10 days. So it'll probably take two weeks from right now to be able to put the finished paint on the completed window sash. And then after that, I can paint it with the latex paint, wait three days, and we can put it in the building. So while we're waiting for the paint to do its thing, I'm going to make the reinforcing rods. They probably don't show up on video, but there are wires that are soldered into the window that are going to wrap around this bar. And all this is for, is because this window is going to be outside, the wind is going to be you know, just smashing into it and then the rain and everything else. So it just gives an extra layer of protection. Even though this is real solid and uh, sturdy against a, a storm wind, it maybe wouldn't have a chance. So hopefully these metal reinforcing rods will make a difference. And that's what we're going to look at next. This is the reinforcing rod for the window. It's made out of 516 square bar. What I did was I made a um, practice attempt at what I thought I wanted the corner to look like, and it turned out great. In the process, I started from the center of the bar. I had 24 inches, and I did the work, measured it again from the center of the bar. I had 24 and a half inches, so that means I'm going to have to subtract an inch from my finished length for the other part to match exactly the same and turn out the right length. Now the tricky part is going to be making the other three ends look the same as this one.
I'd like to close the video here on uh, parts installed on the window. What we're looking at, these are the reinforcement rods that run across. There's wires that are soldered onto the window that once everything is painted, they'll get wrapped on there. And this will help the window be able to get through a strong windstorm.